Hi everyone and welcome. My name is Teddy and I'm a knitwear designer. On this channel I talk about knitting, my designs and all the creative processes around my work. I also talk about Ukraine, my heritage and many many other things. I'm recording this episode primarily for my Patreon and YouTube channel members who will get a primary access. So if you'd like to stay up to date, please consider joining me on Patreon or as a member of my YouTube channel. If you're watching this at a later date, please subscribe and enjoy the episode. Hi everyone, and thank you so much for choosing to spend a bit of your time with me. I hope you are doing well, as much as it's currently possible in your life. Um, I really hope that this little episode can bring you some peace and happiness. That's very uh, <laughs> presumptuous of me. But yeah, uh, for me, uh, the last couple of weeks were a bit messy. I had some health problems while well, I still have them and it's taking really long time to get um, the tests and the diagnostics and everything and the waiting lines for the appointments are terrible so at some point it really feels like it's just easier to fly back to Ukraine get a treatment and and have it over in a week than just wait six weeks for an appointment but yeah, a part of that, um, it's been it's been very exciting, and uh, I felt very inspired in in doing things again. I started embroidering again, picked up the the new blouse that I'm embroidering for 
probably now a year. Um, so the sleeve, the main sleeve is now done and I only have to, I have to redo the, the upper part of the sleeve, which is like a separate section here on the shoulder. So, um, now I see that what I embroidered on the sleeve doesn't really work with what I embroidered on both of the upper shoulders. So I'm planning to um, just, yeah, take it out and um, uh, redo the whole thing. And um, yeah, it's also a very, very um, therapeutic in a way that it's much slower than knitting. And um, I also learned to enjoy it a bit more these days than than I was before. And also now with a when I have more light, um, it's also a bit easier physically to see what I'm doing and uh, to make less mistakes. And then uh, just today in the morning, I felt like I want a new cardigan, and I found some um, yarn that I had in my stash. Um, so I'm thinking this. This weekend I'll probably be busy with a new cardigan, um, most likely following the old pattern but making it a bit shorter, I think, um, and like going one size down so that it's not that oversized, but that I could still wear it on top of sweaters and um, just regular outfits when it's when it's a bit more chilly than than just a regular sweater. Yeah, and. Um, one main thing that I wanted to show you today is the new design that I came up with in collaboration with Mayak. My Yak or M Yak, <laughs> whatever that is, it's an um, uh, Italian brand uh, that's working with um, Yak fibers and the fibers, uh, the yarns that are produced on the Tibetan plateau. So, um, they are more luxurious and uh, probably on the more expensive side but um, they are also they also have like a social impact and uh, uh, they're also very warm the other day i wore my voloshka pullover that i designed for the yak uh, base and it was just it's super light and it's super warm and when it's this spring sort of weather with lots of rain, so it's very humid and cold. I found that it was, worked better than any other super chunky uh, sweater because it's light, it, you can wear it right on your skin and it it's very warm. It gives you very good insulation without making it making you too warm. So yeah, that's um, what I was enjoying recently. And this new one I made in there um, it is a wool, so it's not yak, but it is a wool fiber that is very soft and warm as well. It feels very different, so I guess the, the sheep breed is um, is somehow different from whatever I used before. And um, this one is called Tibetan Cloud, and it does feel like a cloud. Um, it's a DK weight. It does uh, open up beautifully after blocking, and uh, it it was like a really pleasure to work with. And I think I will be also enjoying wearing it just um, close to my skin. Um, yeah, let me show you. So this is what I was working on in the last couple of weeks, finishing the sample and uh, starting writing the pattern and now starting the test. Let me tell you a bit about this pattern. It's a winding ivy that actually grows from the bottom of the yoke and goes um, narrower, smaller, right to the top of the yoke. And um, the funny story about that is that I saw a comment somewhere on Instagram or on YouTube, a person saying that, oh, when are you going to make a yoke that has this uh, sort of pattern that it's not uh, falling down from the from the neck to the yoke, but instead the, uh, grows from the bottom up. 
and by that well, I'm actually I sat down and I reflected back and I thought yes there is a trend like that in my work and uh, I made a, a little selection of the sweaters that I could find just um, somewhere close that I don't have to look for them and um, I want to show you that it's actually true uh, it started all with Florario <laughs> and here you can tell that it goes uh, down from yoke and and the flowers are uh, direction of the flowers is down so you start with the leaves and then the flowers and then the end and that's how the pattern works on the yoke and uh, it's the same thing in many many of my designs where I see that it's also more natural right to imagine things just um, I don't know like trees or things um, it's not with the grasses it's a bit different than they they hold their heads the flowers and with trees it's usually they hang their flowers so you will have leaves on top and then the flowers will be nicely hanging from the branches and that's I think what, uh, what I usually have in my mind when I imagine a yoke um, so yeah that's the reason why many many of my designs like for instance between petals that's also a branch of of flowers that starts with leaves here and then spreads out and you have all those flowers down the yoke uh, what else what else what else yeah of course brusca is the same the same idea um, Celine Celine is also it's leaves and and cherries and uh, everything that that just goes down and and is hanging <laughs> um, I think from the from the very first ones yeah also roots and shoots that's a bit um, as well with uh, with pattern growing down and here you we were talking more about the small leaves and um, starting from a tiny uh, bud and spreading out down but this is more it's a little bit of a different story I think uh, I think the cross of like the, f the closer I got to having um, no it's actually the same like look at this it's um, this one is called um, a fin boss um, and that's about this uh, flower oh, what is the name uh, oh my god I forgot I forgot the name of flower I'm gonna tell you in the comments um, but this is also about the flower that's yes in this case is looking up but it still starts with this um, yeah I don't know strange strange element there or floral <laughs> something that um, that actually ends with the flower so this one is probably the closest I got to actually turning up flowers the other way around and then um, of course Paulina has flowers that are looking up and these are sunflowers or whatever you think they could be um, so this this is probably the first yoke that I actually turned the other way around um, so now no one can say I don't do that and this one will be a proper um, winding a branch of uh, leaves or yeah these are leaves ivy leaves that are growing from the bottom up starting from this little well it's not very tr close to the true yeah so the proper ivy would not have this uh, sort of leaves but let's be abstract a bit here so yeah it will just um, go this way and I added this little woven in elements that are actually added uh, on top uh, after you finish the sweater and uh, these act as um, as a root of sorts and you can make a pattern of them by threading them in different directions as many as you like as long as you like and um, yeah and they are just hanging like this on the other side 
and uh, if you want you can bring them to the front and have these little tassels on the front that's also an option so yeah this is the idea behind having the pattern this way around and then it might be more ornamental around the neck and yeah it, it actually looks very nice and very feminine and um I think these little elements they also add a lot of interest to, to the to the yoke and to the sweater in general. Um, with these little elements I also did them only on the front. So I just to make them on the front and then leave the back uh, plain as it is. So if you don't like that you can also make the whole sweater like this. You can choose how much to add and how much to do. So I have them on the sleeves and the whole front. Um, and then nothing on the back. Yeah, um, it's very simple round yoke blower with two by two ribbing on the cuff. I made the cuff a bit more loose and um, the whole sweater is a bit more oversized to have the freedom to move. Um, I know that now I'm wearing this uh, cinnamon blower and it does feel very nice. I feel myself more uh, collected sort of when it's more fitted and I do feel like um, it is nice and um, flattering to have things uh, closely fitted but I also feel really nice sometimes to wear an oversized sweater and feel cozy um, and yeah and you can always downsize you can always go a size smaller and uh, get a more fitted option so that's that's not a problem at all <laughs> but i just noticed that um also with brusca it was quite oversized um and this one is also oversized so i guess next one will have to be a more fitted one another interesting thing with this one is the neck i used um a new for me technique that um, it sort of imitates tubular caston but it's actually um, it's done with provisional caston that is then folded and turned into two by two ribbing um, and this is what it creates it creates a very nice a stretchy uh, neck that is not too stretchy it, it stretches to some point and um, I hope I calculated it right for all sizes to be just just right but after that point it doesn't stretch anymore and then it transitions this way into two by two ribbing and um, I think it's very cute it's very smart and very easy much easier than just a regular tubular custom that is done really stretchy uh, I don't like it that much to be honest um, so this one is a new is a new thing for me and I think I'm gonna use it more often because it's just that simple um yeah so this one is in testing now and i have the pattern has um, a video explanation of how, of how to do the yoke and i also recorded a video on how to do this little element you see they are fixed um, in the row um, just below the color work where the color work ends and then they are threaded to to the through the column of the stitches um, just below the, the central pattern repeat stitch and um, in between the pattern repeats and that makes this beautiful pattern and then you can also f start um, and this on different levels to create um, an extra interest and a bit more movement uh, in the pattern yeah so everything is explained and uh, I showed everything in the video and the tips how to finish this uh, the inside um, of this woven in element so all, all is there and we are testing the pattern and I'm hoping for it to be out in um, in June and considering that the yarn is so soft and light it could be something for for summer and spring and all seasons I I don't really have seasons for my sweaters I wear wool all year round so for me personally that doesn't matter I I knit in summer the same I don't knit cotton or summer clothes I think it's a bit of a waste we don't get proper summers here and if it's it's really hot then it's just a few days and it's terribly hot like you're you're not gonna wear anything you don't want to wear anything 
uh, on those days uh, otherwise it's just very mild and rainy and yeah for me that's, that's it. where i live is not the climate for summer clothes and with the climate change and everything that we experience every year i don't think that's going to be a concern uh, for me so that's the way uh, it works um i'm planning to do a cardigan in a very let me show you in a very chunky yarn and and i think i'm still gonna wear it in summer it's it's just it's just that um so yeah uh shall i tell you about the colors so for this one i used this two this one is called uh if i'm not wrong canela um it's a beautiful mm, burnt orange it's borderline between burnt or orange and i don't know with a bit of pink it's not red for sure yeah it's it's a very beautiful but quite tricky color in terms that uh even though my wardrobe is very cohesive and many warm color like most warm colors will work with it um I had a bit of a problem fitting it into into an outfit so I ended up wearing it with black jeans which match the contrasting color and that works perfect um, but in general this is a very beautiful color it's just you have to think wise um, what you're gonna wear it with because um, it doesn't really work with this raspberry and it doesn't really well you see with with brown with a um, yeah unless you have some neutrals and if you have like a nice beige or yeah with neutrals this is gonna look gorgeous yeah that's actually a good idea i'm gonna try that um so the, for the contrasting color i used black petunia and i thought it's gonna be more purplish so i actually ex like petunia you would think that it's it's a bit of a purplish but it does it does feel almost black it does maybe with a little hint of of purple but it does feel black and uh, I actually that's another trend I'm noticing that I'm drawn to very strong contracts this year well at least now these days um, but I think it also works very well like the two of them it's gorgeous it's just gorgeous um and with the right outfit it could look really really stylish and really i don't know expensive so yeah these are the two that i used uh, and uh it came up really quickly um i uh, draw the the pattern on my graph paper just uh, what i do for my embroidery as well I just I made myself um, sheets of um, just little sheets with little squares that I print out in my printer. Um, I also have them on sale on uh, on Etsy for like a, year, a euro or so. So if you are lazy to do that, um, you can just go and get them. And it's very easy to print on on your printer, and then you can use them for whatever you like for embroidery, for color work, sketch, um, drawing sketches. Um, so I just yeah I sketched up the pattern and um, the sweater knit up really quickly because it is officially a DK but it knits I think it knits a bit more plum um, so it grows really quickly it does um, it took me probably a week to finish the whole thing considering that I was still figuring out um, little details so yeah um i told you everything right if you have any questions please um let me know in the comments but i'm very happy with this one and uh i can't wait to see what comes next because yeah sometimes it feels like i'm doing a lot and that i'm and that i'm and that i'm putting a lot of pressure on myself but on the other hand it's like I don't have a choice really I feel like I have all those ideas and and they just want to get out um, so even if I wasn't um, earning anything from it 
or I wasn't doing it as a business, I would still be doing it. Like I can't imagine doing something else right now. So I guess there is something the universe wants me to share with you. So that's, that's what I will keep doing. Um, about the cardigan. A few years ago, many years ago, I knitted myself, no, let's start from the beginning. My mom knitted herself a cardigan. Um, she designed it and it's very simple. It's a sewn cardigan with square front, uh, v-neck, uh, and it's just square back and uh, um, the two front sides and then the sleeves are picked up in the round and knitted top down and then yeah you have the shoulder seams and uh, what else and then you have a v-neck placket that is knit uh, picked up and knit um, around the collar and it has two uh, pockets uh, the ones that are sewn in on top yeah that's it very simple so my mom had it and then uh, she gave it to me i wore it for many years and then it was really worn out. Um, it was some sort of... I don't even know what kind of yarn it was. Um, but it did last a lot. I think there was some synthetic fiber in it as well. But it was from the day when in Ukraine you couldn't get any yarn. So you were lucky if you could get some um, yarn. And it was mixed also with different threads. So it was like a lot. Um, a lot of things. But it, da it did last a long time. So uh, in... Uh, when I started knitting pro properly myself, I decided to redo it and make a new one um, just the same way and, and publish it as a pattern. So I, pu I published it as a pattern called Mom's Cardigan, logically, right? And um, mine was made in size 2, which, which gave me a bust of uh, 123 or so centimeters, which is, which is like 40 centimeters of positive ease for me. And it's wonderful, it's long and it's roomy and yeah, it's great to wear inside. I can't wear it outside because it's just, it's too much and I can't put it in any jacket. <laughs> and it doesn't feel right to go out outside in this huge, um, cozy sort of blanket with sleeves. So now that I've been wearing it for so long, it started as well peeling a bit. Uh, and it also stretched out because it was hanging on a hook in my closet and it's just like re really easy uh, there for me to grab it and wear it and yeah it's just this sort of garment where that you throw on top when when it just gets a bit too chilly and and i can have sweaters underneath and vests underneath and everything so i'm super happy to have to have it around but um that being said i wanted to have something a bit shorter um now that i understand my style a bit more i also see that it could be nice to have it just to my hips not super not cropped but um, to have it just a bit shorter and then um, probably have it in a size smaller the smallest size there it gets me it will get me 110 115 centimeters which is still very oversized and should be comfortable with all the sweaters um, but it will be more uh, fitted and um, yeah I think it should work very well so this one um, when I knitted this one it was in a yarn it's it was also a la Foslopi. it's an Icelandic yarn that is a bulky weight with uh, 100 meters per 100 grams so it is um, quite chunky and I'm gonna knit it on six millimeter needles or maybe even bigger, six and a half. I have to swatch and see. Um, but I did use this kind of yarn for this one and I mixed this last time. The color was a bit too pale so I mixed it up with the, the thread of silk mohair, with a pinkish thread of silk mohair that gave it a bit of, um, of a shade and uh, it made it more pink and uh, more suitable for for my complexion. Um, so yeah, it's um, you can see that there's some peeling on top of it. There's uh, there's been I could still wear it 
the yarn itself is performing very well but the problem with it was that it did stretch quite a lot and most of all the where it was hanging so the neck of the, the thing stretched and the collar stretched and um, what I did to fix it I actually folded in the collar that's why it looks so bulky and not, not nice it wasn't supposed to be that way but I did fold it in and I sew it in on the inside to have it a bit more yeah bulky and give it more stru structure uh, well it worked with my my success <laughs> my level of success but um well it worked so i can still wear it um but i would really prefer to have a new one with that will be a bit smaller here so it's not so dropping off my shoulder and um yeah and have a proper um, placket um, neck and you know everything more proper so now it's just a temporary fix before i make something new and i think i should probably also unravel this one and repurpose the yarn because otherwise it will be just forgotten um i'm not gonna if i have a new good fitting one i'm not gonna wear this one so but the yarn itself it's still very very nice and there's just just a bit of of peeling that major halo that you can remove easily so yeah this is what the cardigan, how it looks now. And uh, I found this yarn in, um, that I was stashing in. This was, okay, it doesn't have the color name, but it's this sort of oatmeal, tweedy color that I'm, I'm thinking to mix with this uh, warm, I don't know how it's called, this one is called brown nougat brown nougat nougat um that will also bring a bit of warmth to to this to this color i think it needs a bit of warmth for for me um i'm gonna swatch and see because i have another option that is a bit more pale um but i think this will be nice and i have only two two skeins and a tiny bit of leftover that i could use uh, but considering that this one is 100 meters and this one is one is 225 meters and I have five skeins that should be more or less enough for for the for a shorter version of the cardigan I think the smallest size calls for 550 meters so that should be I think that should be more than enough so yeah, that's the plan. Um, I got very excited today in the morning. I don't know why, <laughs> but sometimes it happens and then you feel like you have to cast, it on, cast on something immediately. So instead of um, doing some stupid paperwork or, uh, I don't know, working on translations or grading or answering emails, lots of those things take a lot of time and focus. But sometimes yeah, I just feel like simply knitting so this will be a simply knitting kind of project and um, if that can bring some attention to my previously pattern, published patterns then it's more than enough um, justification to do it so yeah it doesn't always have to be about something new I think um, we often we get excited to see new things and uh, but we also sometimes, we designers also sometimes forget that people forget and also some people haven't seen it. Um, they joined you later and they haven't seen your previous work. And also the joy of, I don't know, revisiting old patterns is that you already have a body of projects that people realized and you can get inspired and you can use those to inspire other people. So it's actually it's actually very smart to go back to your old patterns and uh, uh, give them a second life, like boost them a little bit, because um, that's your, that's my portfolio, and it should work for me, right? So yeah, that's um, that's this, and uh, I'm not gonna show you my blouse because there is nothing to show yet. But as soon as I'm done with this part, I will move to to the front. I still have to embroider the front. 
it's now all on a big uh, piece of fabric um, I didn't cut anything so it I embroider everything on a big piece of fabric then I will have to wash it so that it shrinks into its uh, final state and after that I will cut it and sew it together probably by hand I'm not sure yet if I'm gonna use a machine or we'll do it the whole old traditional way by just joining the pieces together um, yeah there's lots of opportunities there and lots of new things to learn and it's also very exciting um, I just only need to find the time for it so yeah that's my creative um, things that I wanted to share with you this uh, this time so next time I hope to have um, another new design to share with you which is very exciting and um, the new cardigan I think it should grow really fast on a, on a big size needle so hopefully that um, that will be next time Thanks for joining and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.